one of Game Time Connecticut's Games of the Week. It's Varsity Boys Across here on the DAF Media Network. The one-seeded Darien Blue Wave visit the ever-tough location of Tiger Hollow to face off against the two-seeded Ridgefield Tigers. The girls played yesterday, which resulted in a Darien win 14-7 over the Tigers, but we'll see who comes out on top tonight. Hello everyone, thank you for joining us here on the DAF Media Network. My name is Ted Brennan. Alongside me tonight is Ridgefield's own Mike Conchator. Mike, we should have a great game between the one and the two seed in the state. What are you expecting from this team or from both teams? Uh, you know, you got two explosive offensive teams here. Uh, Ridgefield comes out scoring a lot. 3-0 to start the season. Darian, 2-0 to start the season with a 24 to 1 win against Brian McMahon earlier last week and you know I'm expecting a very high scoring game but very close I think both defenses are good enough to hold them but I also think both offensive teams and matchups will be very fun to watch here in a high scoring game both teams of course the ones and the two seeds Darian is an ever tough team to beat and because of last year there was no season so the boys are ready to get back onto the field and compete Darian is technically the state championship or they are the state champions from 2019 of course no season no 2020 season due to the COVID-19 pandemic we are just about underway here from Tiger Hollow in Ridgefield Connecticut on a Tuesday night And Darian will win the faceoff here. That one is stopped. And it will find the goalkeeper, Liam Hartford. Actually, no, that's Liam Shepard, or Matthew Shepard, excuse me. Shepard is in net tonight. He had four saves in Ridgefield's last matchup against Fairfield Prep. And Michael, in that game, Ridgefield showed their explosive offense. They had a 9-0 run to come back from a very small deficit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, racing a 9-0 run and uh, to win 13-5 uh, five here at Tiger Hollow. You know, you got to be happy if, if you're Ridgefield coming into a big game against the number one team in the state. You're thinking, let's keep this momentum, push it on to this game. I'm sure that's exactly what they're thinking. As Coach Jeff Braymeyer for Darien, his team is not going to go down easy as Demopolis makes a big save there off of the shot from number three, the captain, Ryan Colsey. Ryan Colsey, the son of Coach Roy Colsey. He made a great move to the front of the net there and a great save. For the Darien goaltender. That one was directed towards number 18, Finn Picorni, right off his stick. And it will find the goalkeeper, Shepard. Ridgefield now with the ball, progressing forward. Here's Winkler with it. Is it up to, to Alexander? Richfield faces a tough goalie in Andy Demopoulos. He is the number one goalie in the state of Connecticut for boys lacrosse. But that one is just wide. Demopoulos catches a break. Looked like he was almost caught sleeping there. CJ Laurentani gets the feet from Colsey in front, and they can't put it away. Great opportunity there, but Demopoulos with another. Uh, he actually got a little lucky there as it went by uh, the left side of the net. And Darianne and Ridgefield still tied zero. Could have been an early 1-0 lead for Ridgefield. Darianne makes a move. Here's... O'Malley with the ball now. Gives it up to Finn Picorni. Picorni, one of the three Picornis on this team. His little brother Brady and his cousin Steven play for this Darianne team. It's a family affair here for the Picornis. Moore inside. 
Tried to find Brady Bicorni. No good. Ridgefield out and running. Here's Owen Gatos. Senior captain. A lot of action so far here from both offenses already. Great saves by both goaltenders in this game. Still, it's tied 0-0. A lot of offensive chances. Both coaches making a lot of substitutions. Trying to get some fresh legs out on the field. Ridgefield looking to find something. DeGrasse is stick handling. He's got Oliver Bolton poking right at him. Staying with him. That's tight defense there from Bolton. DeGrasse is holding that ball for a while. He finally gives it off. Here's Co Colsey. Colsey! That one goes just wide. Colsey gets another opportunity, misses wide once again. You see him from that X position coming out of the front a lot, generating a lot of offense for this Tigers team. It'll be Reinhardt with the ball. He gives it back to Colsey. Tight defense on Colsey. Tried to go inside. Finds Ridgefield. That's in! Score there by Ridgefield. We'll try to get the number as soon as possible. That's CJ Laurentani. Number 19. What a job by Laurentani there. Fake shot. Cuts out to the outside. Brings it back into the inside. We take it's a look area. here. It's actually not Laurentani. That's not 19. If we're able to see that again. We can figure out who that is. That one actually was Kyle Colsey, I believe, number 13. The freshman attacking for Ridgefield. Another one of Coach Roy Colsey's sons. Sure, it's a very special moment for him to be coaching both his sons at the same time. Absolutely. So Ridgefield takes an early 1-0 lead here on the number one team in the state off of the goal from Kyle Colsey. And... Penalty here. So Darian will be a man up right now. Don't know what the call is, but Darian will be a man up. I think we saw an illegal cross checking down in the inside of the offensive zone for Darian. That was Joe Mizzarelli taking that penalty. So a great offensive chance here for Darian if they can convert. Darian moving the ball around. Here's a shot. That save. Good save there from Shepard. Off of the rocket of a shot from Finn Bacorny. Penalty has expired. It'll be even strength for both teams now. Minikis trying to get free. And Ridgefield will be awarded possession. Minikis had the ball for too long there behind the net. And Shepard will take it forward. Shepard tried to get it to Dowd. But it will be Darian Ball. And Shepard so far, Mike, has been very good. This Darian offense takes a lot of shots and they make a lot of shots. But so far, haven't been able to find the back of the net. Yeah, as we said, they won their last game 24-1. to That's a lot of goals being scored in. Not a lot of goals against. Uh, they clearly have such a good offensive, and they have a uh, minded team with a lot of quick pace, uh, a lot of shots being taken, and uh, Shepard right now seems to be holding it down early in this game. Their first game against Brian McMahon, that was the 24-1 victory, and then in their last matchup, they played Glastonbury, number eight, 
or was number eight in the state. They won that game 14 to six. They are outscoring opponents 43 to six, 43 to seven now. And Shepard got that one to Dowd. He gets out there a little bit more, and it could be trouble. Looked like uh, Shepard was uh, actually in a lot of trouble there, but he uh, was able to get it off to Dowd over the line. And now Ridgefield handles the ball in their offensive zone. It'll be DeGrasse with the ball. Trying to set something up for Ridgefield. About five minutes remain here in this first quarter. And Winkler lost the ball. And that'll be a foul there. Ridgefield will be awarded possession. Here's the grass. Reinhardt, about the 35 yard line, surveying the defense. Some trouble for Ridgefield, trying to find that ball. It's on the ground. Poked out, and it'll be picked up by Darianne. That's Oliver Bolton streaking down the field. Bolton, unassisted goal, ties this game up. What a shot from Bolton there. Stole the ball in his own defensive zone and ran all the way. Was looking at the net the entire time. A great shot there. It's one to one here at Tiger Hollow. That was a great play there from Bolton as we take a look. Streaking down the field. Says, I'm going to take this myself. Top corner to tie this game up. After all the talk we had about Shepard, lets that one in. And Ridgefield will take over here as it is a tie ball game. So far, we've seen some fireworks early on, just like you've predicted, Mike. And if this, if the rest of the game progresses anything like these first couple of minutes, I believe first eight minutes have, should be a fun one. Yeah, exciting play in this first quarter already. It's only a 1-1 game, but a lot of action in the defensive zone and offensive zones for both teams. And that one is no good from Colsey. Demopoulos might have gotten a stick on that one. And we saw Colsley do that earlier. He, again, he misses wide. Seems to be that's his play. Comes around from the exposition and fires a shot. If anybody in the ACC is watching, Colsey's going to Virginia next year. So if you're in the ACC, might want to look out for that. Good ball possession here from Ridgefield, Lawrence Hani. That one finds a Darian stick. Lauren Tani tried to go inside. Darian defense said no. That's something Coach Jeff Braymeyer for Darian wanted to emphasize after their win over Glastonbury. The offense is the offense is there. The defense not so much. They've been missing a couple of assignments here and there, and he wants to tighten that up. He said he's been doing a little a lot more teaching than practicing than he has in years past. And that hurts when you miss a year. That one is good! Brady Picorni with another strike. We take a look here. Sidearm sling right past Shepard. Comes from that right side right into the middle of their offensive zone. As you said, sidearm sling right past Shepard. Darianne now takes the lead, 2-1. Two, two minutes and 41 seconds remaining in this first. Goal there from Picorni. He had three goals in their win over, in Darian's win over Glastonbury as Ridgefield will win the draw. Ridgefield doing a good job getting early possessions off of the draw. Gatos passes that one to Alexander. Something we've seen here early on, Mike, is that Ridgefield takes their time on offense. They're not a, not a run-and-gun team. They're really getting into their spots and really taking their time. And I think that's where 
Uh, they have posts from Darianne. Darianne seems to be moving that ball a lot quicker than Ridgefield, shooting as much as they can when possible. Ridgefield seems to hold that ball a little longer, looking for the perfect shot. Two very different approaches, and if you're Ridgefield, probably one of the keys to the game is play your tempo. Don't let Darian dictate the tempo of this match. Absolutely. Miss shot there from the grass. Ridgefield will have the ball behind the net. Here's Colsey. Colsey blocked by Demopolis. There it is again, his third attempt there from Colsey from behind the net coming in to the front. Demopolis with another great save on him. Colsey behind the net again. Let's see if he goes again. Tries it. Dinopolis says no. Darianne's going to win that ball. Dinopolis doing a good job of reading Colsey's, I guess we can call it his signature shot so far. Three attempts, or four attempts, and nothing doing for him. Danny Lau now with the ball. Gives that one up. Darian might be trying to hold on to the ball. Only a minute left here in this first quarter. Taking a page from Roy Colsey's playbook there. A shot. Oh, right off the crossbar. That was a great shot from Joe Caesar. That one... Hit the crossbar. It'll be Darian possession, much to the chagrin of the Tiger Nation. Richfield parents not really liking that call, but it will stand. Darian has the ball in their offensive zone. 30 seconds remaining here. Score 2-1 to one here on the DAF Media Network. A joint venture between the Darian Foundation and the Darian Athletic Foundation. Darian again. It's Caesar. Caesar. Good stop there by Shepard. Richfield making a push. Ten seconds left. The shot, and it's good. Jojo, Jojo Missarelli, unassisted, ties this game up right before the end of the first quarter. So we take a look. Missarelli, absolutely fooling Andy Demopoulos. What a shot there from Mizzarelli. Gets that pass from Shepard. He'll pick up an assist. Mizzarelli runs down the length of the field. They call him Joe Miz in Ridgefield. Nice shot from him, and he'll tie this game up with eight seconds to go in this first quarter. And unless something drastic happens, the score will stand at 2-2 two to two going in to the second quarter. Graham might try to get a shot off here. And time will expire. It is 2-2 two to two here on the DAF Media Network. We're going to take a short break. We'll be back with the second quarter action in just a moment. This broadcast is produced by DAF Media, a joint venture between the Darien Foundation and the Darien Athletic Foundation. The production is staffed by student and adult volunteers from the town of Darien and southwestern Connecticut. Back here on the DAF Media Network, a joint venture between the Darien Foundation and the Darien Athletic Foundation. And Mike, 
We've talked a little bit about Roy Colsley tonight. What can you tell me on him? Roy Colsey, he had a professional career from 1996 to 2007. He's a three-time champion in the MLL, playing for the Philadelphia Barrage, where he led them to a championship. He actually is a national championship with uh, Syracuse as well. Uh, his nickname, Big Coles. And he started coaching Ridgefield in 2009 and continues today, winning his first state championship in 2011. If there's anybody who has knowledge of the game, it's going to be Roy Colsey. A lot of experience around the game and comes back to Ridgefield to coach his sons and this Ridgefield Tigers team. 2-2 two to two the score off of goals from Cozy and Missarelli from Ridgefield and Bolton and Bacorny for Darianne. And we have an exciting matchup here tonight as Demopoulos gets a save there off of the shot from Lil Cozy as they call him here, Kyle Cozy. And that one is stopped by Shepard. Here's Shepard coming alive again after letting up one questionable goal and one really good goal. And that's another big save as he's made two in a row here. It'll be Ridgefield ball here after the Colsey save. And delay of game from Ridgefield. An opportunity for Darian to see if they can convert. That one off the post. A matter of inches. Brady Picorni thought he had it. That one just off the post, and Ridgefield survives a delay of game. That was almost Picorni's second goal of the game, but hits both posts and stays out. Ridgefield gets lucky there and stays 2-2. Two two. Shepard might be kissing the iron after that one, saying thank you. Both irons. You don't see that often. Double doink. Back to slow offense from Ridgefield, looking to set up and see what they're going to do with uh, some changes. As Gatos goes off and Winkler comes on. We just saw it. We saw the fast-paced offense of Darianne. Now we're seeing a slower-paced offense from Ridgefield as Colsey throws that one out of bounds. Again with that signature shot. If you're Demopolis, every time you see three with the ball, you got to be expecting that. Essentially, come around, shoot. I don't know what you would call it, but... It sounds right to me. <laughs> Ridgefield with some good passing. That one was intended for, I believe, Lil Colsey. But it finds Big Colsey. Colsey, big stop again. there by Demopolis. Another wraparound shot. His signature shot. I think that's, what, six times now that we've seen that? Six or seven has to be close to there. Demopolis tracking it well every time. Colsey missed a couple opportunities, but now Demopolis comes up with two big saves there. Captain Jameson Moore brought that one up. Jameson Moore committed to play at Princeton after a gap year next year. He'll be rocking Richfield colors at Princeton. Uh, black and orange. Black and orange. Some great colors. It'll be Ridgefield possession. Darian missing an opportunity there. Ridgefield on the attack again. Here's Kyle Colsey. And that one gets right into Demopolis' stick. Fire that one down. Running gun offense. Here we go. Inside. Goes low and he scores. Michael Minikis. Or excuse me, Matthew Minikis. Michael is his brother. Matthew Minikis with the score there. With the assist. With the assist from number 24, Christian Allegra. As we take a look. Nice little... Shot there. Good work. Go, went low right through the old five hole. And that'll open up scoring in this second quarter. Great goal from Darianne there. Makes it 3-2. to two. And still a lot of offensive pressure from both teams early in this second quarter. 
Neither team giving up, though. No, no, no let up from either defense. After you let in one, you can't get discouraged. You just have to shake it off and get back, especially against teams like Darien and Ridgefield, because they'll make you pay if you're, you know, walking back, shaking your head, saying, oh, we just let in another one. You just got to let it roll off your back. Here's Darien again. That's more. That's a goal there. That's number 19. Or 18, I think. Uh, number 15, Danny Lau. We're having a little trouble up here seeing as we are much farther away. But that's Danny Lau, number 15. So we take a look. That's a bullseye of a shot going past Shepard. Right under his left side. Great placement of the shot. And Darian gets two quick goals and leads 4-2. Danny Lau with his first goal of the night. Committed to play at Swarthmore next year. He had one goal in the win against Glastonbury. Already has a goal here against Ridgefield. Darian moving that ball around. Caesar with it now. He's got one, or he's got an assist, I believe. Tried to bounce that one. That'll be no good. That's Lau again looking for his second goal of the night. But great defense there by Ridgefield. Looks like Darian's going to get this ball back after the missed opportunity. Good defense there by Ridgefield again. But um, Darian continuing to apply the pressure early in the second quarter as they've already gotten two goals. And a good save there by Shepard off of the shot from Matt Stein. And Shepard will get that one to Dowd. And Ridgefield will go back on the attack. Good defense from the captain, Sam Erickson. Winkler almost found a hole. Had a lot of space, running real quick to the net there, but didn't take the shot, trailed off, gave it to Coley behind the net. Will we see the wraparound again from Colsey? We do, but Demopoulos is right there. Rebounded! Luke Winkler off of the rebound from a Colsey shot. And the score is 4-3. to three. Winkler finds himself open, gets the rebound off the shot, right off of Demopoulos, puts it right back on net. And he'll get a goal there. You see, rebound there. And... It was tough for Demopoulos, who went to his left to make the first save off of the wraparound shot from Colsey, and it just took a tough bounce off of his stick and found the awaiting stick of Winkler. And Winkler makes Darianne pay. That's something that both teams do very well, capitalizing on the little small holes that an, an average team might not be able to do. And there will be a timeout here on the field. And I was able to catch up with senior captains Andy Demopoulos, Jameson Moore, and Holt Mathias yesterday. And Jameson was able to tell me that the message in Coach Braymeyer's huddles is exactly the same. Doesn't change much from year to year. It's to control what they can control, and that's their selves. We are confident in our ability, and we just have to go out there and execute. And Mike, right now, they're going out there, and they're controlling what they can control, and they're executing very well. You know, you see the, the slow-paced offense from Ridgefield compared to the fast-paced offense of Darien. You see that they, they do a lot of the same things every time, but... You know, they're, they're switching it up with players and, and shot shot opportunities where as Ridgefield is looking for the perfect shot opportunity, a little slower. Quote from Captain Owen Gato Sr. For us as a team, we're picking up on our own identity. That's why we don't quit. We're fighters. And you can see that in this team. It's 3-4. to four. Darianne leads. Winkler with that goal right there. And this is going to be a great game to the finish. Gato said that after the win against New Canaan, they had a come-from-behind win against New Canaan. 
and we can see, and Mike, as you alluded to, we can see it here early on. They were down four to two just a few seconds ago, and they now make it th four to three. And they're not going to give up. They're not going to roll over, which should make for a very interesting second half. You know, uh, up to this point, you know, you, we're seeing a lot of opportunities. Both goalies playing tremendous. I think this game will end up being a lot of goals for both both teams, maybe 15, 14 each. It was a great save by Shepard off of the Moore shot. And Ridgefield tried to take a page out of Darien's book, tried to run the length of the field. But they unfortunately lost that one in the attacking zone. It'll be Darien ball as they will look to run and push. Here's Darien with it now. That's Minikis. Minikis takes a page out of Colsey's book and scores. I believe that's Minikis. You were right there, Matthew Minikis, junior attackman. Again, like you said, takes a page out of Ryan Colsey's playbook. Around from the back, behind the net, and a lefty shot over the shoulder. And Dominicus, uh, M Minikis, on his first opportunity on that play, he capitalizes, whereas Colsey's taken seven or eight shots from that spot. Still hasn't found it yet, but looks like he will as he keeps trying. That's Minikis' second goal of the quarter, second goal, of course, of the night. And Darian has a 5-3 lead here with under six minutes to go in this second quarter and the first half. Darian wins another one. That's Kaminsky on the draws. He's been doing very well in the attacking zone. Good defense. Makes a man lose a stick. And here comes Ridgefield. Not sure who made that hit for Ridgefield. It was a great job by them. And here's Ridgefield calling a timeout. We will also take a timeout. And we'll be back on the DOF Media Network in just a moment. Back here on the DAF Media Network, I'm going to give a quick shout out to our production crew, Thomas Kiernan directing it, e, uh, ugh, Ian McCarthy on Instant Replay, Connor Sini on Main Camera, Bo Hancock on ISO Camera. My color commentator tonight is Mike Conchator. I'm Ted Brennan. Thank you all for joining us here on a Tuesday evening in Ridgefield. And thank you to our DAF Media volunteers making the drive up from Darianne. Except Mike over here from Ridgefield. Want that a nice little five-minute drive for you? Uh, absolutely. It's just a quick little drive right over to the high school. You know, best part about this Tiger Hollow is you're down below and you look up and you see a great skyline with some trees in the background. And especially in the springtime when we're playing lacrosse and um, some, some games in the, in the fall for football, it just looks very good. So we love Tiger Hollow here at Ridgefield. Ridgefield on the attack now. Colsey gets pushed all the way from the 20 to the 40. Good defensive stand there from senior captain Sam Erickson. He's committed to West Point to play lacrosse. That's something that both 
teams, not only both teams, but both schools, pride themselves on. They send a lot of athletes from every sport to Division One, Division Two, and Division Three colleges to play sports. Here's Colsey. Tried to find someone. Allegro had it for a moment, lost it. And it will be Darian on the attack. But again, just looking up and down both rosters, Mike, there are at least four or five plus commits from either team. Yeah, I mean, you know, we feel that a couple uh, early commits last year, Colsey to Virginia, Prohaska to UNC. He's actually coming off an ACL tear uh, two years ago in his uh, sophomore uh, freshman campaign in football. You have uh, C.J. Laurentani going to uh, Lafayette. Amherst College for Owen Gatos. He's playing football. Many players uh, going to, to further their academic career while playing sports. We'd love to see it here in the FCAC. Caesar tried to go low on Shepard, but Shepard says no, closing up that five hole. And you mentioned that Gatos is going to play football at Amherst, and that just shows the versatility of either team. As I know Connor O'Malley for Darian, he's playing both football and lacrosse at Washington and Lee or at least he plans to, and that just shows how athletic and how deep each team is. You know, the, the, the FCAC is, is uh, very gifted to have many star athletes uh, come from. Now, uh, Ridgefield, uh, Ridgefield's own former teams, you know, Peter Durth plays lacrosse uh, at Syracuse, and his older brother plays in the, uh, the NLL, National Lacrosse League, and uh, their youngest brother, who was a senior last year and lost the season, to COVID-19 pandemic. Raymond Durth plays lacrosse at Harvard now. So, uh, you know, lacrosse, especially for the FCAC and for Ridgefield, is, is a birthplace for many uh, college athletic careers. If I had to name everybody, every Darien player who's playing college lacrosse right now, we might be here for until tomorrow morning. They, there are so many, so many players from so many different teams. And this year is no different. And a shot there from Colsey. Tried that move again. Darianne's going to get that ball. Darianne playing with 13 committed athletes to, to play at colleges as we take a look there. Colsey almost had it, but almost only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. Here's Erickson now with the ball. Gives that one up and he'll run back on defense. Of course, you can have no more than six players on the attacking side or else that is a penalty. That's what makes the job. The midfield, they're so hard. Playing defense, and offense. Now, I'm, I'm not super familiar with the sport of lacrosse, but it looks tiring out there being a midfielder running back and forth and back and forth. I'm sure both coaches pride themselves on having good midfielders and having leaders out there. As that's another goal from Darianne. We try to find who that was. I believe it was number 11, Patrick Thurlow. Actually, that's the senior captain, Jameson Moore. Number 12, the senior captain, Jamison Moore, with a nice little spin and deke. And he will extend this Darianne lead right before halftime. It's only a minute and 29 to go in this second quarter. Jamison Moore makes a great move to the outside, puts it under the wickets again. Shepard, and they lead this game 6-3 to three here at Tiger Hollow. And Ridgefield will take another timeout. I'm sure Coach Cosley, or Colsey, is not happy with how his team is playing on defense you know if you're coach Colsey what are you what are you looking for them to do on defense I think Richfield's just got to tighten up a little bit uh, I think they need a little bit more from their offensive opportunities as well they're holding the ball very well but the shots they're taking are not great and you know we, we, we talked about that slow paced offense from Richfield they're looking for the perfect shot they found it three times in this game already but they, I think they got to keep shooting the ball at a, at a higher pace, getting more balls on net, which will end up in goals. Taking a look again at that Jameson Moore goal. 
And Shepard went low while Moore went high. Top shelf. I think actually Shepard got a piece of that to lift that top shelf. But Jameson Moore with the shot. And Mike, you mentioned that the Richfield offense, they need to make more of their opportunities. As we can see on the board from here at least, Richfield, eight shots, three goals. Darian, 15 shots, six goals. Darian, of course, with a higher percentage on offense. And maybe for Richfield, try to spread the ball out a little bit. Don't go back to the same play because it looks like Demopolis is on that Colsey shot. Absolutely. You know, we've seen a lot of times in this game. I think earlier in the quarter, we said, what, six or seven times already in the uh, first quarter and then a little bit in the second. And now we're, we're getting out to the... Uh, end of the stretch of the first half we're seeing that play being redone and redone over and over again which it's a great play Colsey's a very skilled player high IQ of, of lacrosse I think uh, when when the Tigers move the ball around get more shot opportunities from different guys different angles I think Demopolis will be a little bit shaken up in that regard and the goals will start to come a little bit more for Ridgefield going in to this second half the only goal for Ridgefield of this quarter was off of a rebound from Winkler off of the shot from Colsey so don't necessarily stray away too much from Colsey but maybe try to take some shots from different angles have different players get Demopolis moving so he's not falling into the same pattern for Richfield they have three goals from Kyle Colsey Jojo Misarelli and Luke Winkler Darianne they have six goals from Oliver Bolton Brady Picorni Danny Lau two from Matthew Minicus and one from Jameson Moore. Just over a minute here in this Class L regular season matchup. And Mike, this could be a playoff preview as not only are FCX no restrictions in the divisions at least, the uh, CIAC has decided to go forward with state playoffs. So we could be seeing this matchup again later on in the playoffs. We actually saw this the same exact matchup in 2018, the state uh, championship of Ridgefield was crowned champions against Darianne. And uh, I'd love to see it again. This is an exciting game. Both teams have, again, explosive offenses and uh, great defenses keeping uh, goals out of the net. Moore again! Jameson Moore with a rifle of a shot. Puts that one f past Shepard. And the score is now 7-3 in favor of Darianne. So we take a look here. A nice spin move from Moore. And just rifled it past Shepard off of a cannon of a shot. Shepard, who was very good to start this game, had, I believe, four or five saves in a row, is looking a little shaken up, a little... Sh little Needs a, needs a confidence booster is what I'm getting at. I would say the same thing. I mean, he started off hot. 20, oh, only 24 seconds left in this second quarter. And, uh, you know, uh, Moore is uh, hammering him today. Because that's his, his second goal of the night. 7-3. Blue Wave leads. 24 seconds here. Rest in peace, Kobe Bryant. Of course, number 24, legendary basketball player as we are in a timeout right now. Seven to three to score here. And although this is regular season, this will have playoff implications as one team will lose, of course, because that's how sports work. Uh, but one team will lose and that'll definitely hurt them later on as both teams right now are undefeated and both of them are having a heck of a season. One of these teams today will leave with their first loss of the season. Though early, it is Still a great feat for both teams. Richfield starting out 3-0, Darian starting out 2-0. Uh, we'll see what happens today, but it, it looks like Darian with the lead is playing a better offensive strategized game. And they look a little cleaner out there. Darian, although they have the lead right now and although they were a very skilled offensive team, we saw just last week that Richfield came had a come from behind win against New Canaan. They were down early on. They were down 7-4 at halftime. So it's very reminiscent of that game. And they ended up winning 10-9. So they may be down, but they are certainly not out of it as they proved against New Canaan, who at the time, I believe, was the number two or three seed. Yeah, taking 
Gatos is quote once again, um, you know, they're, they're trying to find their own identity. That's why we don't quit. We're fighters. That was from senior uh, captain Owen Gatos, who had that um, quote on Game Time CT for the preseason look at the Tigers. And he's absolutely right. We saw that in the New Canyon game, as you mentioned. Let's see if uh, what they can do here in this second half against Darien. Very reminiscent of that game. A higher seed going against a lower-seeded Ridgefield. Almost an identical score. Um, although it will be at least a one extra goal uh, comparing it to that New Canaan game. And looks like Darianne will get a free possession with 5.3 ticks left. Shot. That one goes just wide. That'll do it for the first half here on the DAF Media Network. Mike, what have you seen out of this Ridgefield team? Ridgefield team, you know, they looked a little bit sloppy in that in that second quarter compared to their first quarter. I think their first quarter they were moving the ball a lot, a lot better. They were taking time with their possession. It seems uh, the second quarter they were trying to take a page out of Darianne's book with a little bit of a rushed offense, not looking great in the offensive zone, not doing the things that they are capable of doing. Um, we saw, I believe, nine shots from that Ridgefield team compared to Darianne's 17 shots. And the score shows that as Darianne leads um, by four going into the second half. As for Darianne, a bit of a shaky first quarter, but they tightened it up in the second quarter, and that's why they had the lead. So that'll do it for the first half. We'll be back with second half action in about nine minutes. We are DAF Media, Darianne's hometown source for sports, arts, and entertainment, established in 2017. We are Community, a volunteer-based organization that gives nearly 50 Darianne High School students hands-on experience in video production. We are Cutting Edge, a STEM initiative. Students use cameras, computers, sound equipment, and innovative software. We are live, streaming 120 events per year on our YouTube channel. We are on the stage. We are at the big games. We are on the field. We are in the gym. We are on the move. Live streaming not only in Darianne, but throughout southwestern Connecticut and the tri-state area. 
We are making a difference. We are DAF Media. This broadcast is produced by DAF Media, a joint venture between the Darianne Foundation and the Darianne Athletic Foundation. The production is staffed by student and adult volunteers from the town of Darien and southwestern Connecticut.
back here on the DAF Media Network with some second half varsity boys lacrosse here on the DAF Media Network. For those of you just joining us, my name is Ted Brennan. Alongside me is Richfield's own Mike Conchator. And so far, Mike, we've seen a very good game, almost or essentially what we've expected from a one and a two seed. Yeah, you know, uh, this game uh, has been pretty high scoring as of now. Darian with seven goals and 16 shots. Uh, the Tigers with eight um, eight shots and three goals. Um, you know, uh, Richfield coming off of a big win against New Canaan here at Tiger Hollow. Uh, while down and then going on a 9-0 uh, run to come back and win that game. Darian coming off of a big win, 24-1 against McMahon. And these two teams are not disappointing here. Darian converting on about 43% of their opportunities. A nice little roll. Well, Darian converting on for about 43%. Make that a little less than 43% now. That's quick calculation, 41%. And the Tigers are converting on about 37% of their opportunities. That's quick math right there. Always helps to have a calculator. <laughs> So Darian settling back into their offense now. Not their typical run and gun style, but they are still very good out of set plays. And that one. Bouncing ball. Picked up by Brady Picorni, who loses it almost immediately. And now looks like Richfield will have possession of it. That's Kai Prohaska, the UNC commit, who was able to scoop that one up. Still with it now. Here's Prohaska, blocked by Demopoulos. Demopoulos says no. Long ball. Right to Minicus. He's got two, he's looking for his third. The speedster, just over Shepard's. Stick there. Demopolis, he'll be playing at Brown next year. Very good school for lacrosse. Originally committed to Johns Hopkins, flips his commitment to Brown and shown why he's the number one goalie in the state. You know, those aren't two bad options. <laughs> I'd, uh, I'd like to have those two options. <laughs> I'm sure 95% of the country would love to have those two options. It'll be Darianne Ball here. Score is still 7-3 to three early on. Moore flips that one over to O'Malley. Here's O'Malley. And a low shot. That's Picorni. His second of the night off of the assist from Connor O'Malley. Great goal by Picorni there. Found himself very, very open in the middle. Um, right in front of the Tigers goal. And here's a look at it right there. Just a little scoop shot right under Shepard's stick. Darien now leads eight to three. 10 minutes and five remaining in this third quarter. Darien bringing the fireworks here. And Ridgefield digging themselves ever further down that hole. Again, not out of it by any means but it certainly is tough to come back from any deficit against a Darianne team. As Kaminsky tried to take it through the entire team and get stopped there. Kaminsky had that ball for a long time, right off the faceoff, trucking multiple guys, and then finally gets himself right in front of the net where he's going to lose that ball, and possession will go to Ridgefield. Looking like his running back days as he played football for... A little bit of varsity action, a little bit of JV action, a little back and forth. But using his football running back skills to try and truck his way through as Prohaska will have the ball now. There will be a delayed penalty unless Ridgefield can convert before Darian will pick it up. Prohaska got hit pretty hard there, but he, uh, he'll shake that off. Looks a little tired on that field. And, uh, Richfield awaiting their power play unless they score. 
If Ridgefield can convert, Darian will avoid the man down situation, but I'm sure they'd rather have a man down instead of a goal. Ridgefield getting into their offense, moving it around. This looks like a little bit of the offense we saw in the first quarter from Ridgefield. And straight away from that in the second quarter, but here, starting this second half, looks a little more um, a little more convincing for the Tigers. And that shot is blocked by Demopoulos off of the shot from Kyle Colsey. And that penalty looks like it's waved off. And Ridgefield will have it again. Right back to Darianne. As we saw there on that last Ridgefield possession, Col or Ryan Colsey was waiting essentially in his office. If you want to call Gretzky's office behind the net, that's where Colsey's office is set up as of right now. Didn't get the ball on that possession, but I'm sure we'll see more of him later on in this second half. And a stop there by Shepard. And Mike, one of the great things about this spring season is that there are very little restrictions. Of course, masks still in place, as they should be. But as you can see, there are tons of fans in the stands. Tons of fans in the stands here at Ridgefield, Tiger Hollow. It's a great spot for fans to watch games. You know, I haven't seen this many people in a venue of any sort, uh, you know, since before uh, pre-pandemic days. So it's, uh, it's a little odd to see, a little scary. But, you know, uh, we love to see that people are starting to get out of the house, you know, get out into the into the outside, the outside world. And, uh, you know, you, you, you love to see it. It's definitely great to see fans enjoying their sons play some lacrosse here. Darien fans are well-traveled. They're coming up all the way to Ridgefield. That's not an easy drive. Uh, I made it today going through the back roads. Although it took me 45 minutes, it was not a fun drive with all the twists and turns. But here's Colsey. Blocked by Demopoulos. Demopoulos out of his net. And Darian will pick it up. Some substitutions will be made here. For Darian only. Uh, it seems Ridgefield's not going to change a thing. Looks like Ridgefield will get the ball. And there was a penalty on Darianne there. Not really sure what the call was, but they are a man up now. Richfield will have the man up situation. Darian will be a man down. Here's Colsey in his office. Quick shot and in. Gets one through. Finally, I'm sure that gets his confidence back up as we take a look. Colsey tried, or he didn't sling that one like he normally did. He just, a little overhand push right over the left shoulder of Demopolis. And the Tigers they make quick work of that man advantage. Colsey finally gets it back in his office and you know when you see him with the ball we know the move. We've been saying it all day it's quick. It's very quick and it's hard to stop. Demopolis has do been doing a great job. Probably 15 opportunities from Colsey behind that net to the outside and left side and with the lefty shot finally gets it past him for his first goal of the game. Both Colsey brothers now have a goal in this game as Kaminsky has the ball. And Kaminsky again, like you said, the running back days comes in handy once again. He wins the faceoff. Now Richfield started off this game winning the majority of the faceoffs, uh, except the first one where Darianne almost had a quick chance for a quick goal there, but didn't. Um, and now Darianne seems to have won the last five faceoffs that have been taken at center field. Mike, here's a fun fact about Ridgefield's last game. Both Colsey brothers, identical stat lines. Two goals, one assist. I'm sure that's a very special moment for those brothers. For the brothers and the coach, of course, their father. Shepard stops a rocket. And here comes Gatos. Looks like Gatos has got some sort of wrap or brace on that left ankle. As he'll head to the sideline. Owen Gatos, definitely a style guy. I think that's for style. I'm not <laughs> sure if he's injured. Uh, I know, you, you know, he, he does have good style in school, like walking around the town, especially on the field. 
and especially on the football field as well. Well, you know who else has good style? You, Mike. You showed up in full suit today, not knowing that DAF does not necessarily require a dress code, but full suit and tie. Went full suit and tie for the game today. You know, thought we were going to be on camera. Ended up not being on camera. Ran to the car real quick, put on a sweatshirt, and now uh, I'm comfortable calling this great game. Here's Ridgefield. Low shot off the post from Lil Colsey. Great shot there by Little Colsey, a little sidearm sling. And he fell on the shot quickly to get back up and uh, tries to get the ball back for Ridgefield, but Darian will hold possession. If he ever wants to go into a rap career, Lil Colsey, that'll be a great name. Here's Moore coming up that left side. Going through everybody, taking all these shots from this Ridgefield defense. He'll retain possession once again on that far side of your screen. Beautiful night here in Ridgefield, Connecticut. A perfect setting for a great matchup. And might have been a delay of the game. Not 100% sure. But it will be Ridgefield possession. I'm not sure either, but again, Ridgefield has the ball and the grass will take it up. Moore comes off the field. But here comes Ridgefield. One of the things that Coach Roy Colesley, or Colesley said about this team is that because they lost a year as Colsey, that one is in. Ryan Colsey back-to-back -back goals unassisted from his office. There's Colsey with his second goal of the game in this quarter as well. The third quarter looking very nice for him. And that's his second of the game. Again, coming out uh, this time on the right side. Takes it. Righty shot. Goes back past Darian goaltender. It looks like Coles has got his confidence back. Minutes apart from each other. And as I was mentioning, Coach Roy Coles, he said that because you are after losing a year, you kind of lose your the identity and you're starting over from scratch. But it seems like Richfield cut their identity could be. It's definitely a fighting team, but it could be a it could be the comeback kids if oh, they pull absolutely. this one off. But a Derry angle right there. <laughs> As I was speaking, I believe that's number nine, Matt Stein. A beautiful goal. Six seconds after the Colsey goal, and Matt Stein gets on the board. to make this a 9-5 to five game. And you know, you were talking, you were just saying, Ridgefield Tigers looking like the comeback kids. Darian uh, <laughs> kind of interrupts you with a goal of their own to make it 9-5 to five and they extend their lead. I think in the business they call that the announcer's curse. Every time they put up a statistic or say something, the exact opposite happens. Absolutely. You know, it happens a lot, and especially it just happened there. We just saw that. Kind of an incredible thing. Shot there, just wide. Darian had another scoring opportunity there. Right now, officially converting on 50% of their opportunities. 18 shots, 9 goals. It's a great goal percentage for them. And a big save there from Shepard. You could hear the reaction of the Ridgefield crowd. Breathing a sigh of relief. As Shepard loses it again, there's no one in net. And misses the blown goal. But it will be Ridgefield Ball avoiding what could have been a disastrous situation. That was interesting. You know, uh, Shepard has been in trouble one time before in this game. It was in the first quarter, and you saw it again right there. Trips with the ball, loses it. And luckily, Ridgefield will get the ball back. And then another... Loss of possession. Darian will get it back. Can Shepard get there in time? And he gets there in time. What an incredible save by Shepard. Making up for his mistake early, earlier just a few seconds ago. I'm sure Coach Colsey had his heart in his throat right there. That was incredible. It was flagged. Thrown in the field. 
Looks like it will be against Ridgefield. Delayed penalty there. But that could have been disastrous. There was no one in net. Darian was just a bit too slow on the recovery. Trying to get that one in. That's twice now that Shepard has been bailed out. Once by the refs, once by himself. We'll look to see if he can clean it up a little bit. Here's Darian now. And bobbled pass from Caesar to Kaminsky, but Kaminsky will find it. Kaminsky finds the net. Makes this a 10 to 5 game. That's actually Christian Allegro, number 24. Christian Allegro makes this a 10 to 5 game. And here's a look at it. What a shot. Goes low once again. Bounces it under Shepard there. They had the delayed call. They held possession for a little bit. And finally they strike. Makes it 10 to 5. Five goal deficit here for the Tigers. With a minute and 25 remaining in this third quarter. Mike, your prediction of 15 right now holds true. But I think if it's anything like these last few minutes and quarters, it'll be more than 15. Oh, absolutely. And there's another uh, face-off there. But this time the Tigers win it, which that hasn't happened in a while. And they'll get set up with this offense. And a missed pass there from Colsey. The intended target was C.J. Laurentani. Or Laurentani. Tani. Laurentani. There we go. Uh, Lauren Tani has a assist early on. He had an assist earlier in this game. Also had a great opportunity earlier, but I believe it hit the posts if my memory serves me well. Here's Darian O'Malley. Senior captain Jameson Moore. I was able to talk to him specifically about the pressure of being number one in the state and being the team that everybody wants to beat. He said the pressure and the target that comes with being the top seed in the state is something they don't uh, that Darian does not shy away from. We know that everyone is going to give their best shot when we play them, but we are ready for that. We have the best coach in the country in Coach Braymeyer, and he prepares us for this. We embrace the pressure and respond to it by going out there and playing to the best of our abilities. And so far, we've seen a great showcase from this team missing senior captain Holt Mathias who definitely adds another layer to this offense as Moore finds Brady Picorni again Brady Picorni his third goal of the night and that completes his hat trick we get a look at it here it's a little low shot from the side goes right under Shepard once again they extend their lead Six goals. It's 11-5 to Ariane. Brady Picorni matching his total from the last game against Glastonbury, number the eight seed from Saturday. And Darianne will win. Here's Kaminsky. Kaminsky trying to take it all the way. No good. And that one will be lofted down the field as time expires in the third quarter. It's 11-5 here on the DAF Media Network, a joint venture between the Darian Foundation and the Darian Athletic Foundation. We'll be back with the final quarter of action in just a moment.
Back here live on the DAF Media Network, you're now getting a look into the press box. Of course, I'm Ted Brennan alongside Mike Ca uh, Conchator, excuse me. <laughs> Said it all night, yet I still stumble with it. But 11-5 game here on the DAF Media Network. A great shot from our director, Thomas Kiernan, there. So we'll give another little wave over to the PTZ down there. And we'll bring you some more fourth quarter action here on the DAF Media Network. Mike, we've seen fireworks from both sides as it is 16 goals combined from the two teams. Yeah, you know, um, I expected a little bit more of a pushback here in the second half from uh, Ridgefield. But, um, yeah, but, you know, I... Uh, we see Darien playing playing a very hard game, tough game to, to get around their defense. Looking up this game, I know you said they had some struggles, or uh, you said their coach said that, um, but their defense looks pretty solid here, and uh, Ridgefield's a step slow tonight, but let's see what they can do in this fourth quarter. Considering that Ridgefield was the number two in the state, Darien is doing a pretty good job of keeping them off the scoreboard besides that first quarter. And those last couple of minutes in that third quarter as another goal. That one. We got to get a second look at that. That was incredible. So we take a look. Oh, behind the back. That's a beauty. What a goal. I believe that was number nine. Matt Stein. With a... Beautiful little throw behind. I don't know if we can take another look at that to confirm that that was Stein. So we're taking another look. It's tough to see from this angle. But that is Matt Stein. Confirmed by our instant replay and directing team of Ian McCarthy. Who's also working graphics and Thomas Kiernan. A nice little over the shoulder. You don't really see that too much. But Stein getting flashy. What a shot. I mean, that, that was incredible. He is second of the, the night. play of the game. Second of the night for Mr. Stein. As Darian, seven goal lead, 12 to five. And another goal. Who else but Brady Bacorny, his fourth of the night. Here's Darian with a large push here. Interesting to see what the Tigers will do to respond. But right now it's all Darian. 13 to 5. 23 shots against the Tigers 13 shots. Darian has as many goals as Richfield has shots. Brady Bacorny definitely making his case for DA Media player of the game. He's got four goals here tonight. I'm sure maybe one or two assists. Jameson Moore was able to assist on that last goal from Bacorny. Richfield will win the draw here. Gatos will have possession, as we mentioned, going to Amherst College next year. First time in a while that Richfield has had a solid stretch of offense. And uh, we're seeing that. It's developing now. Let's see what they can do with this opportunity. Here's Lil Colsey. Gives that one up to Alexander. Colsey. Here comes Ridgefield. Shot! Slips out of the stick there. Just, uh, just a little high and outside. You know, that was closer to being a field goal than a lacrosse goal. <laughs> but it was a good effort there. Colsey back in his office. Blocked by Demopolis. Demopolis says no.
Darian's coach, Coach Jeff Braymeyer, has been coaching here for a very long time. He is the winningest coach as Colsey tried to go from his office. That one missed. But Coach Jeff Braymeyer is the winningest coach in Connecticut lacrosse history. Over 600 wins, countless state titles and FCF titles. And if he's not already in the Hall of Fame, a surefire Hall of Famer. First ballot has to be. Beautiful goal! Beautiful goal from number 21, Josiah DeGrass. Faked high, went low. Here's some pushback from the Tigers. Still in a large deficit here. But that one goal from DeGrass will help out a lot. Went under a little scoop shot once again. It's 13 to six, Darianne leads. I like DeGrasse's goal song, a little can't touch this from MC Hammer. Makes you want to move and groove. What am I, 40 move and groove? Oh my lord. I haven't heard that in a long time or ever. <laughs> Every now and again, you say things and you're like, wait a minute, I'm, I'm a high schooler, I'm 17, why, I'm 17, 18 years old, why am I saying that? Especially us announcers, you know, talking a lot. Trying to get a lot of words out in a short amount of time. Some stuff slips out. Some stuff sounds weird. Some st stuff, yeah, some stuff sounds great. And just like that. I mean, at least I'm not saying get. Let's get jiggy with it. Although I just said it there, but could be worse options than moving and grooving. Back to the action. 8:15 left here. Darian up seven. And there's a big hit. Looking like football season. Big hit across the middle. Delayed penalty. I'm going to assume that's a personal foul. Cross, illegal cross-checking. And Darianne will be a man down. Richfield, of course, will be the man up. There's another power play for the Tigers here. Now, we saw with their last power play to get their fifth goal it was Ryan Colsey from his office going to the right uh, to the right side with the right-handed shot and see what uh, the Tigers can do here once again Colsey office has a very hockey vibe to it as does the power play hockey history made last night Patrick Marlowe playing in his 1768th game in his career as Demopolis gets the stop had to throw in a little Patrick Marlowe fact one of my favorite players of all time how can you not love him? Here comes Darianne. One on one. What a save by Shepard. Darianne almost capitalizing right there on the man down. Almost a short handed. So. That was a Darianne defender who went all the way one on one. I think that was. That was Oliver Bolton who went all the way. He's got a goal. Scored the first Darian goal of the game. Looking Was looking for his second, but he had a man on his back. And once again, a great save by Shepard. Shepard, even though he's led in 13, he's made a couple of incredible saves. Oh, absolutely. Shepard, I mean, there have been a couple iffy goals, but the majority of this game, a lot of shots being taken on him. He's, he's doing a fantastic job for this Tigers team, and they got to be proud of him. Of course, a, against a team of Darian's caliber, or, or yeah, against a team of Darian's caliber or any team that's a number one or top five, you can't hang your head too much. You have to take the positives out of every game because teams like this, they're going to be very, very good as we've seen here. So if you're Ridgefield and Coach Roy Colsey, you're just trying to look for some positives. I mean, especially in a game like this, it's 13 to six in the fourth quarter. There's very slight chance of them even becoming within three goals of it. But yeah, games like this, it's early in the season. You know, you'll get the first loss, and then you have a long season ahead of you with 
FCAC tournament along with state tournament. I know in the winter season they did not have state tournaments for any of the sports. And uh, lacrosse, both girls and boys, is lucky enough to experience the state tournament this year. So a lot to look forward to for the Tigers team and Darian team as well. Of course, you mentioned the winter season did not have states. Inside, blocked by Shepard. The fall season had a modified state tournament, just essentially just playing teams in their bu in their respective bubbles. But as we mentioned a couple times on the broadcast, the spring season will have very few restrictions. Swing and a miss there from Jameson Moore trying to hit JoJo Missarelli. Nice little spin move there by Missarelli. A little over five minutes remain here in this game. And it's only eight o'clock. Still decently light out on a beautiful night here. Ridgefield, Connecticut. You know what I just realized? I forgot to mention the jerseys. Normally I do that on every broadcast. As that's a goal there! Number four, Luke Winkler. His second of the night. Five minutes and 14 seconds remaining here in this fourth quarter. What can Ridgefield do to climb back? They're taking more shots. They're holding the ball more. Finally, they get one. We get another look at it. Nice lefty shot from Winkler over Demopoulos. Now it's 13 to 7. Darianne leads. Nothing is jerseys. Nothing is impossible with the jerseys. Uh, of course, Richfield in the in the white, orange, and black trims, and Darian in the away blues with black and white trims. Uh, we talked a little bit about Richfield's uniforms. We really do love the whites, the home whites. They just something about it just hits differently, and the orange glow off the helmets are very nice. As Shepard with another nice block. And I think that's the best part about the uniforms. It's it's it's, it's kind of like gold in a way. The how the helmets shine in the lights. And uh, it's very aesthetically pleasing, especially uh, just in Tiger Hollow. Great place to play and a great looking place as well. Allegro with the ball now. He's got one goal. Makes a move. That one is blocked by Shepard. Goes high into the air. And it's a game of who can find it first. Richfield will get ball there. Now, we were saying how Shepard was on a little bit of a downslope during the second and third quarter, but here in the fourth, he's looking a lot better. Darian continues to apply pressure as Ridgefield is still clawing back, and Shepard definitely helping them out in the defensive zone. He allowed two early goals in the fourth, although one of them was a very, very tough shot to stop. The Stein over the, shoulder, over the back shoulder, no look, essentially. But other than that, he's been on his game here in the fourth quarter, late in this fourth quarter. Working from his office is Colsey. Gives it to his little brother. 345 remaining here. If Ridgefield's going to do something, they got to do it fast. That one just wide. Just wide is an understatement again. Another field goal from the Tigers there. That was way wide and high. But a good opportunity from Colsey there. Looks like their offense is starting to piece it together. I think, Colsey, I think Colsey heard me because as soon as I said they need to do it quick, he just rifled a shot out there from a from probably about the 25 as Colsey loses that one. Little flick to Caesar. Right, that was actually Matt Stein. Stein tried to get it to Bacorny, who was cutting. But it looked like that was broken up by the goaltender in Matt Shepard. Matt Shepard, just a junior, so he's got one more year here in Tiger Hollow, and I'm sure Coach Roy Colsey is grateful for that as he has been playing very well in the first two games, and he's playing well in this game even though the score may not reflect that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, facing a high abundance of shots here from Darian Blue Wave. I mean, that's, that's, that's no small feat. It's, uh, it's Darian. It's one of the best teams in the state and, and you know, uh, around the country as well. Very well known for their lacrosse abilities. 
And uh, Shepard putting up a fight here. Score says differently, but he's still doing a great job. Two minutes and 30 seconds remain here in this game. Thirteen to seven is the score. Darian leading the way with Brady Bacorny as their workhorse. Four goals in this game. As they're looking to choose some clock here. Bacorny has four goals. Moore added two. Stein added two. Lau with one. Allegro with one. And Bolton with one. And as you said, Darian's trying to chew this, chew this clock off. It's great coaching right there. I mean, there's two minutes left in this game. We saw in these last, I'd say, three minutes, the Tigers starting to form some sort of comeback. And now Darian holding the ball, not letting them do so. That's just good lacrosse. You know, I always wonder in these situations, would you rather have a team run up the score on you or would you rather have them play keep away? You know... And uh, me being a former hockey player, I'd say the keep away is the worst part. As a goal there. That's number 24, Christian Allegro. His second of the night. We're going to look at that. Cuts in from the right side, right to left. Great lefty shot there, past Shepard, makes it 14 to seven. And unless Ridgefield can score seven goals in a minute 18, that might just do it. We're gonna take one final time out. We'll be back here in just a moment. Back here on the DAF Media Network. That last goal was scored by number 24, Christian Allegro. So we take a look there. So we were talking about either running up the score or playing keep away. And Darian adds another to their total. But Mike, as you were saying, keep away is the worst part. Definitely. I mean, when you're down bad in a game and it's late, all you want to do is try to fight back. But when the team really isn't letting you, especially in sport like lacrosse when possession is a huge part of the game and it's very hard to get the ball back that's a tough thing here's Gatos look at him sprint down the field here's Colsey Colsey in his brother's office Tried to do the, his brother's move, but Demopolis stops it. Another stop there by Demopolis. And 30 seconds remain in this game. I think that just about does it, unless another goal is scored here in the next 20 seconds.
Ridgefield still fighting till the very end. Five seconds left. I think that will do it here on the DAF Media Network. Darian remains undefeated, moving to 3-0. Ridgefield falling to 3-1. This final score here is 14-7. And Mike, what did you see from this Tigers team, and what can they take to their next game? You know, I think the Tigers didn't play a complete game. They were a little... Uh, a little rocky in the middle of the game. They started off very strong. They got the first goal. They looked very hot, very good. Uh, Darien kept pushing and kept pushing. He did not give up one time where I, th I think you saw Ridgefield did a couple times. But uh, overall, great game from both sides. It was real fun to watch and be a part of the DAF Media broadcast. I thank you guys for having me on. No problem. Anytime. That'll do it here for the DAF meeting. I'm going to give one final shout out to our production crew. Thomas Kiernan, our director, Ian McCarthy on Instant Replay and Graphics, Connor Cini, our main camera, Bo Hancock, our ISO camera, of course, my colored commentator for tonight, Mike Conchator. Mike, thank you so much for joining us. It was a pleasure to have you on the broadcast. Pleasure to be on. I would definitely love to do something again with you guys. This is a fantastic uh, broadcast. You guys host a bunch of different cameras, Instant Replay. You got the works, and it's a really good thing to see. Damian Andrew, our advisor. Once again, I'm Ted Brennan. Thank you all so much for joining us. I'm Ted Brennan, signing off.